Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Thank you very much for checking out today's content because today I'm talking about three very important clubs that you can use around a green just like this. The problem I'm now faced with is I've got to go over this little ridge in front of me, but it's not very high, and then it's downhill over like over two tiers towards a flag which is on the other side of the green. This is where I think shot selection and club selection is absolutely vital. I mean, if we set a scenario, this is a par four, we're over the back in two, okay? We've got, a, we're gonna try and get up and down for a par or worst case scenario is bogey. And I think no matter what level of golf you are at, from professional golfer to 28 handicapper, from this situation, we've got to get down in no more than three shots. So that's one chip, two putts. Once we're doing more than that, we're in a pickle. We're in a, we've got a problem, okay? Because this is a tricky little shot but it's not that difficult. I've got to try and get this ball inside of about 15 feet to make sure I can two put, okay? So I want to use a club that's easy. Now, my, my go-to club is a 58 degree. I'm, I've got to be honest, that is a big downfall for me. I'm bad for that. I'll always grab the 58 degree. In this instance, I think a 50 degree for me personally would be nice. I would try and land the ball kind of on the down slope of this first ridge and then just let it flow down the green. Trying to get it within about six foot from here is pretty difficult, okay? And, that, and that's sort of the range where I think my next shot is makeable. Trying to get it inside of six feet is gonna be tricky. So I wanna use a club that I've got a good chance of doing that. Now, if I use a 58, I've gotta land the ball three quarters of the way down there with a really nice strike, bit of grab, and then try and judge the roll out from there based on the slope. If I use an A-tie, I've got to try and land the ball very, very close to this front fringe and then read the green, read the undulations, and then also try and judge the speed, which for me personally, I don't really like. But if you're a higher handicapped golfer, that's the ideal shot to play. Why? Because the golf swing to hit the, an A-tie from here to the front edge of the green is going to be that big. It's, going to be, it's basically going to be a putting stroke. The golf swing to hit a 58 degree and land it three quarters of the way is gonna be there, okay? Now, the longer swing is gonna provide more, naturally gonna provide more speed, naturally gonna provide more power. And in doing so, if we miss hit it, if we catch it thin, then the 58 degree is gonna go absolutely miles. If we maybe catch the eight iron shot a little bit thin, it won't go as far. It won't be as bad of a bad shot, okay? And that's another key. Good players hit good bad shots at the right time, okay? So I think just using your course management, using your club selection is so, so important for this shot. So we're gonna go ahead, I'm gonna demonstrate one with each. Okay, so first up, I'm gonna go with the 58 degree just to kind of show you, to be fair, I'm gonna show you this is the shot you shouldn't really be playing. Now, knowing my look now, it's probably just gonna go in, isn't it, or very, very close, but I need to try and land this, oh, just short of the second ridge, okay? So I need to try and land it there with a good bit of spin, a good strike, and then also the ball's gonna move a little bit from left to right on me as well. So just in terms of shot, I've got the, the feet very narrow, I've got my left foot flared open, I've got the hands just over the top of the golf ball there, so I've not got them forward. And I'm just gonna try, and still using the bounce, still using my rotation, I'm gonna try and land this pinpoint, good strike, Landed where I said. So you're gonna take the slope, take the slope, take the slope, take the slope. It's taking the slope not quite as well as I thought it was going to. I actually hear that really, really nicely and online as well. But it's about, I'd say eight feet short. It's not a bad shot, not a bad shot. But what you should be able to see from that is actually the swing was quite long, wasn't it? This would be my club that I think I should use. It wouldn't be the natural club I'd go for. I'd probably ease myself in with a 54 degree, knowing that the 58 is not right. But I think a 50 degree, I used to chip with this growing up. I used to chip everywhere with a 50, it was a 52 at the time. I used to chip everywhere with a 52. And I just really need to get myself back into it. The only thing that worries me out here in Dubai is the greens are just so fast. But for this one now, I'm gonna try and land this a little bit shorter, but I'm gonna go with the same technique. So I'm not gonna do what I'll see a lot of people chipping and running doing. This is not the way to chip and run, okay? Because all it's gonna do is dig, okay? It takes out the bounce, it lifts the bounce up off the ground, and it just digs the leading edge into the ground. So I'm gonna go with the exact same setup, shorter swing, comes out lower, lands it shorter, it's a lot faster off the face, it's a lot faster on the roll, 
It's now taking the slope. It's gone inside of the first option, first option, first um, first shot, and it's about four or five foot left. Okay, just pulled it a little bit. So I'm going to go with that again. Try that shot again. Same technique. So you could see the swing itself would have looked a lot shorter. Tempo a lot slower. Ball popped out a little bit lower. The first bounce is more of a shooting forward bounce. And then it takes the slope. And it's about four to five feet past the hole. Straight away with that shot, I feel like I've got a lot more control over it because I'm not trying to hit it as far. I'm only trying to hit it halfway up the green. So I'm not having to try and swing it as far. When it's swinging it further, now you're starting to worry about the quality of the strike. These little short swings, not so much. So the eight iron, I think would be a naturally good selection for the majority of golfers. I'm just gonna pop this onto the front edge of the green here. Same setup as the last one. So again, I'm not gonna put it back in my stance. I'm not putting the ball position. Um, I'm not putting my weight too far forward or my hands too far forward. Just nice and neutral. Swing itself is shorter. Again, you can see how much lower it comes out. That's a really nice strike actually. Don't hit the first ball, just misses the first. Oh, and hits the flag. <laughs> that's a pretty good effort. I'll take that. So that's the closest one so far because it's hit the flag. But I'll be honest, if the flag wasn't there, that was still going. So the slopes are so fast downhill that even though I hit it literally five, six paces in front of us, the it was just wasn't slowing down. So what I like about the wedges is they're generally a softer feel. There's a softer face. It creates a little bit more backspin. It's, the, it's obviously got the milled face on there as well. So it creates a lot more backspin, a little bit more grab as the ball lands just a little bit easy to try and figure out what the ball is going to do but for a, for a higher handicapper this is a much easier shot to play because the swing is so much shorter it's a lot easier to get the type of strike as well that one has also finished about four five six feet or so away from the flag so all in all what i would say about all those shots they're all pretty good okay none of those shots are going to lead to a three put none of the shots have missed the green what they've all done, I probably gave myself two outside chance, three outside chances of a par, and the other two maybe a little bit too far. We need to hold like an eight footer or so for the par. But what I've done is not made anything worse than a bogey from what is a relatively straightforward chip, but a tricky situation to get up and down from. But with three very different golf clubs, you will produce three different shots. So it's being able to determine what's the best shot for you and what's the best shot for your score. The technique of all the shots did not change, okay? So I went with the ball position in the center, the weight 60-40 on my left-hand side, the hands not forward, just on top of the golf ball. So I'm using the natural loft of the actual club, and I'm just keeping that pendulum action in the shoulders, making sure that the swing path relative to the target line was staying nice and straight, so I wasn't pulling it too much on the inside or pushing it away on the outside, just kind of keeping everything as neutral as possible, still using a little bit of hips, a little bit of shoulders, soft with the hands as well, and just trying to get this nice little connection the main thing about this this type of shot is your land understanding your landing area so you'll see from the first shot I landed it maybe two-thirds of the way there the second shot I landed it about halfway there and the first shot I landed it about a quarter of the way there just because of the different trajectories and then the different results from there so what I want you to try and do your homework for this video yes you have homework I want you to go to your local golf course and I want you to put yourself in a similar scenario I want you to pull out three similar clubs and just bit of trial and error see what happens with each club understand how each club reacts because like i said on the on the previous video that i did it was a very similar downhill situation but the initial height that i had to get the ball would definitely not have suited an eight iron borderline would have suited a 50 degree but it was good for a 54 or a 58 but if there's no apron you can go in that little bit lower therefore the shot technically will be easier as well all right, so really important that you go out and you try all these different types of shots and you'll learn so much about club selection, okay? So I hope this helps, guys. Please do hit that like button if you think it will help. Also, please subscribe to the channel. We're very close to 50K. It would be amazing to get there, if I'm honest, before Christmas. That would be a dream. So if you could support the channel by pressing subscribe, I will be eternally grateful. Thank you very much for watching again, and I'll see you again in the next video.